I know you like me too comfortable. Will you go sleep someplace else? Now go on, get out of my bed. Go on. <laughs> and don't give me that soulful look. Just go sleep somewhere else. Maybe the transmission is dry. Ah. Maybe the fan needs oil. Ah. You know, you are a really big car. Didn't I tell you the oil and grease the truck? I did it. I did it. And if you did it, why does it sound like that? Well. Hey, good morning. Well, good morning. 
new boss would be delighted as soon as I finished my eggs. Come on in and have a cup of coffee. Thanks. George is probably asleep under some haystack. Yeah, that's what those are. Thanks. I don't know, he was pretty insistent about it. Oh, hey, God! Mm. Eat cold toast, I will make some hot toast. Why, you're just like eating. I make another one. No, really, Fargo, but I'm not hungry, thanks. By the way, did you see George this morning? Yes, he was asleep on the sofa making coffee. I put him outside. <laughs> there, you see? I guess I was mistaken how much you love that dog. <laughs> Can I help you? Oh, hi, Fargo Gerber. He hasn't? Hold on a second. Fargo Gerber said George didn't come in for lunch today. So? Well, Jim seems to think there's nothing to worry about. Okay, yeah, thanks for calling. Bye. Didn't you have a little unusual? I always thought food was a must with George. No, about this time he usually takes a nap. Then he comes next. <laughs> Where are you going? Sleep woman, madam. Here we 
God. Oh, sure. Alpine Airlines charm. Oh, hello, Proud River. What? Well, I wouldn't be worried. Oh, he's probably out playing with his favorite kid friend, Albert. Okay. Okay, I'll tell him. Bye-bye. Oh, hello, Jim. Hi. Proud River just called and she said that you were to be the after school. Jim, I know it's silly to worry about George, but he doesn't have his collar on. And if well, someone were to find him, they wouldn't know where he came from. That's right. Haven't there been other times when George hasn't met Freddie after school? Yeah. This must be one of those times. <laughs> It was a big van, Mr. Jim. They were moving furniture. What makes you think you saw George get into it? Uh, something big and white got in, and then they closed the doors and drove away. Uh, couldn't it have been a, just a big stuffed toy animal or something? Oh, no. It was walking by itself. Oh. I'm a little bit worried, Mr. Jim. Shouldn't we call the police? Well, now, Freddie, let's look at it this way. George is an animal, a very large animal. But, you know, animals can always take care of themselves. Hello, doggy. Do you belong to somebody? You have no collar. You want to come home with me? And now I think it's time for us to work, yeah? No. no I would go on home early so she and Freddie could find out something. But soon it will be dark. But, Frau Gerber, George may act up, remember? And somehow he always lands on his feet. Thank you. Mm. Mommy, mm. I found such a nice dog. May I keep him? I don't think so, dear. You know how your father feels about dogs. But he's lost. How do you know he's lost? He had no collar. I even had a different name. Well, if he's lost, Maybe we can give him something to eat. Hmm? Hmm. 
I don't promise anything until your father comes to me. Papa loves my doggie. You can come now, Fosco. <laughs> How can anyone not love Fosco? Alicia, that's not a doggy, that's a horsey. Gee, it's gonna rain soon. I know. You know, I'm beginning to get a terrible picture of poor George. It's cold. Look, I'm looking at the same picture. Good night, Holly. Just take it easy driving home, though. Good night. Good night. What are you doing? Oh, my side of the bed. Union. 
They wanted him to join the Union. No, ghosts don't have Union. And then his curiosity took over. He stepped out of the cab. They found him the next morning. And actually, they never found him. They only found his footprint. Poor Engelhau. <laughs> Okay, how does this sound? <clears throat> Lost. One St. Bernard dog named George. No collar. Reward. Hey, maybe that's the movie Ben and Freddy talked about. If it is, it's pretty unlikely that George would spend two days in it. Well, why don't we ask him? Come on. I haven't seen him. Yeah, okay, let's go. found him, but I certainly do want to thank you. Oh, man, it took us out of our way to bring him back to you, and uh, you spent an extra ten dollars on gasoline, didn't you, Carl? Did I? Yes, and an extra two and a half hours? Well, just add it up. I'll be happy to pay it. Uh, let's see, that's a uh, dollar an hour for the truck, and uh, I tore my pants from the handle in the truck, and uh, what did you tear, Carl? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing but his... I'm going to call Mr. Engelhart and cancel the ad, okay? Engelhart! Then I guess George went for quite a ride. Still a mystery. What mystery? Well, Freddie saw George get into the truck yesterday. And he came back today. Hey. No. George, I don't think so. Oh. Looking for a George. Isn't he beautiful? Out like a light. And sometimes I wish George could talk. I had a feeling he had quite a time. Does the lifestyle of the rich and famous include a washing machine, ice cubes, and peanut butter? So says the flighty Sophia Loren to a bewildered, bedeviled Clark Gable in It Started in Naples. Tonight at 8, Eastern and Pacific on YTV. George. Some surprise. George. You'll enjoy the time you spend in George's alpine home. Try.